What's up everybody, it's your girl Cherry here and today we're going to discuss a very very special topic very close to my heart and it is how do you still be happy while being frugal? How do you find that um, happy medium and how do you balance between happiness and frugality? And this video is inspired by one of my subscribers. Is it Ah Fam? I, I think I'm butchering your name, but thank you so much for your inspiration. This video is dedicated to you. And here is his question. I'm curious to know, maybe later on, how your quality of life satisfaction is impacted by the different levels of spending you've experienced. And then he goes on to talk about he budgets in reverse, saving for retirement, rainy day, mandatory expenses, rent and taxes, and then anything left over is somewhat expendable. And so in order to answer this question, I am going to explain three parts. Number one, how do I balance between happiness and frugality? Number two, do I budget in reverse? What is my opinion on budgeting in reverse? And number three is my personal long-term and short-term goal, which is why I decided to live so frugally. So number one is the balance between frugality and happiness. And as with like work-life balance, it is never 50-50. You don't work 50% of the time and play or have leisure 50% of the time. Very little people can do this. For me, the balance between happiness and frugality really comes from what do you prioritize? Because certain things such as uh, for me uh, living in a luxury apartment, that I don't prioritize because no matter how much money I spend on a luxury apartment, it does not give me that much joy. And so in order for me to feel happy with the amount of money that I spend and get the most out of every single dollar, I think about what are my non-negotiables? What are the areas that I will never want to save on because those areas are so important to me? For me, those areas are my cats. So anything related to my cats, let it be their health, let it be their food, their shelter, their happiness, their well-being. I always put that first. I spent a lot of money on my cats from cat litter box to cat food, to cat insurance, to surgeries. I spent a lot of money on my cat. But to me, that is non-negotiable. I am not going to cut back on my pet expenses just because I want to save on money. That to me is non-negotiable, not reasonable. So no matter how much money I try to save, I am not going to save on my cat's expenses. And number two for me is self-education. I believe self-education, it, it can be pretty expensive. I, I've bought like $2,000 courses. And yes, I said courses because I bought more than one $2,000 course. I also bought Graham Stephan's real estate course. I bought Graham Stephan's YouTuber course. I bought multiple YouTube courses because to me, self-education is worth it. Knowledge is something that I am willing to spend money on. I am willing to splurge on education and knowledge because to me, that is investing in yourself. And even though I've already graduated from college, I don't think education should stop just because you graduated college. I believe you should continue with self-education even after you finish traditional education. This is the only way for you to grow, for your business to grow, and for your results to multiply itself. And number three is safety. Safety is also one of my non-negotiables, especially when I travel alone, because as a single female in her early 20s, safety is really the most important thing. I mean, what's the point of saving money or having a very fat retirement account or savings account if you're in danger or if you lose your life? Like, what's the point of that? So to me, safety is so important. Yes, I can save so much more money if I live in a sketchy neighborhood or if I go to like a sketchy hostel instead of a hotel or if I live on streets or camp somewhere where I pay zero rent. But at the same time, I would compromise my own safety. So to me, that is a non-negotiable that I will not save on. And the last part is convenience and efficiency. So I bought an automatic cat litter box because it is more efficient for me to use an automatic cat litter box instead of me kind of like scraping out poop every single day. That to me is convenient and it increases my efficiency. I bought Alexa. Alexa, 
turn on the lights. Alexa, oh, okay. Alexa, turn off the lights. I'm not sure if you guys can see because it's daylight, but I got Alexa because it increases my efficiency and it's also very much convenient. I don't have to manually climb out of my hammock at night to turn on or off the lights. I can do some late night reading sessions without worrying about climbing out of the comfort of my hammock and my blanket and uh, <laughs> getting my feet on the ground or in cat litter. So that to me increases my efficiency and also convenience. So this is also an area, it is the last of my non-negotiable because obviously it's not as important as the ones I've listed before, but it is still something that I'm willing to spend a little more money on just to improve the quality of my life. So let's talk about budgeting in reverse. So I believe that to some extent, I do budget in reverse, meaning everything I talked about, my non-negotiables, I tend to spend more money on. And anything outside of that, I tend to save. I also came across another YouTube comment asking me, what would I do after I become rich or wealthy? Am I going to splurge on everything? Or am I going to still continue to be frugal? And my answer is that, I am going to splurge on things that I care about, such as my non-negotiables, and save on everything else that I don't care about because they are not the needle movers of my happiness or my business or my self. They don't improve the quality of my life that much compared to my non-negotiables. So that's why even if I become so-called wealthy, traditionally speaking, I am still going to continue living frugally for the things that I don't care about as much, for the things that are outside my non-negotiables. And lastly, I would like to talk about my long-term and short-term goal. My short-term goal is within five years, I'd like to buy my own place. I want to buy my own place here in West LA, preferably a house so that I can give my cats more space to wander around and play around and that just gives me so much joy. Even the thought of seeing them roam up and down the stairs just gives me so much joy. And my midterm goal is that I'd like to accumulate 1 million in net worth by the age of 35. And to me, this is definitely attainable. If I continue with my current rate of income and current rate of savings and investing. And my long-term goal is that I'd like to retire with 19 million. And this might sound like an absurd number, really, really high number. And I actually really never thought of how much I'm going to retire with until just yesterday when I opened up my Wealthfront account. And this is the projection. And to me, even though 19 million sounds like a lot of money and I have no idea what I'm going to do with 19 million, I'd like to just continue with this trend, with this pace I'm going at in life, with this pace I'm going at in investing and savings. And I don't see anything wrong with accumulating more wealth because wealth or money, these are not inherently evil. These are just tools. Think of them like a screwdriver. They're just tools. What makes them good or bad is what is your intention of using this tool? If you're using this tool to do good in life, then this tool causes good things to happen. If you use this tool to do bad things in life, then of course, this tool will cause bad things to happen. And of course, I want to do good in life. I have not yet decided what I want to do with 19 million when I reach retirement, but I'd still like to keep on moving towards this goal. So this is how I balance frugality and happiness. What is your approach? How do you remain your happiness level when you're trying to cut back on spending money? Do you think being frugal has any effect on your overall happiness? please let me know in the comments. I read every single one of them and I respond to every single one of them. If you enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and hit that bell for more videos like this and I will see you in my next personal finance video.